It's now blowing 48 knots. Today we are on our way to the biggest active volcano in Europe. We are entering a truly alien landscape here. Where we're going now, we're happy because it means it's very unlikely that there's going to be an eruption under our feet. Fingers crossed. Hello everyone! So today we are on our way to the biggest active volcano in Europe, which is Letna. Mount Etna. Sorry, it's the French way. Letna. Letna. Bien But sûr. Mount Etna. Uh, we're gonna spend two days over there, one night, mm -hmm. in, a, in a cottage. So um, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be lots of fun. It's now blowing something like 48 knots outside here and uh, we're in two minds about leaving so on one side we're a little bit stressed that when we leave Talia will be blowing around here in her mooring but that said she's tied down very well and we've <laughs> survived this sort of wind already here but on the other hand we're a little bit relieved that we don't have to be on board while we're moving around like oh, this. Oh yes. Uh, all, all day. Anyway, uh, we are about to head off now. We're going to take the long road via Syracuse and Avola. Uh, so maybe we can find some wine on the way. Who knows? Wine on the way? But <laughs> that's the only thing you can think of. I'm just thinking of you. It's 9 a.m. <laughs> Let's try not to fall because our pass rail is moving a lot. Old Tali is getting a real beating by this Force 9 or almost Force 10 wind. So is it windy enough for you? Yes, of course it is! Should go sailing, see how Talia handles almost 50 knots. I think not. All right, I'm awaiting Luke. He went for the keys for the car. And right here, it's okay because uh, I'm protected by the building, so there's no wind and it's much better like this. And we should have the car really soon, so I can't wait to go to Edna! So we are now in Syracuse. We've decided to stop here for lunch and since we were here Luke said oh there's a nice chandlery here I'd like to go there if we go to Syracuse. I said yeah no worries because he actually wants to buy some Dyneema lines for uh, creating some soft shackles and I said yes of course let's do that but then I decided I'll stay in the car and I think it was a terrible idea because now I'm not sure when he will come back a sailor in a chandlery is not a good idea it's like a woman in a Zara or H&M you know doing shopping anyway um, I'm waiting for him it's been 15 minutes now I hope he's not gonna be too long and after that we'll go to a really nice place we know here uh, for lunch and then we'll go to Mont Etna I can't wait Syracuse Harbour is exposed to the east and since we're planning to be here in a couple of weeks we were curious to check out the protection with almost 50 knots blowing directly in I like how this fishing boats moored up for the wind just in the middle of nowhere with seven different lines hanging off his sides. You know what he said, right? He said, I've just painted my boat this nice smurf blue color. I don't want it rubbing against any of the moorings here. So I'll just dock straight in the middle of the marina. 
While protection inside the harbour seemed reasonable, albeit pretty choppy, outside the harbour was a totally different story. Not ideal sailing conditions if you ask me. So we carried on with our journey up the volcano. Look at the view! Ah! That's chilly! So we've just made a pit stop on the way up Mount Etna towards where we're staying for tonight. It is freezing! But as you can see all around us, this is just ash all on the ground here. Further over there. And if you look behind us here, the cloud formation is so cool. Check that out. Volcano ash, freshly cooked. <laughs> Here, check that out. So you can see all the way to mainland Italy over there. All right, let's get back in the car, it's freezing. We are entering a truly alien landscape here. Very, very different to what we're used to. It's all dark. That's, I think that's what's the most shocking is... It's black. It's all black. Welcome to MTV Cribs volcano version. <laughs> So what do you think of this uh, place we're staying in? I love it! I think what I love the most about it is that there's nothing around. Like, it's just us in a cottage in the mountains. I mean, on Mount Edna. And uh, nobody else. It's very quiet as well, so... And the place is gorgeous. Have a look at this. It's all wood. It's warm. It's cozy. It's... Mmm. What's the temperature outside? Three degrees. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. to be getting a little bit of mountain air. It's so fresh and crisp up here. It's actually pretty chilly, but it's really, really pleasant and it's so quiet. Luke is outside. He's coming back right now because he went uh, to shoot some drone footage. The landscape is just beautiful because we are above the clouds and there's the sun behind me. So it's all good. Um, we are so lucky to be here. He's brave. He went outside and I think it's pretty cold, right? Yeah, it's chilly. It is, right. All right, we're gonna have breakfast and see you later. Peace. <laughs> All right, we are ready. It's not even nine o'clock and we have a perfect sun. Unfortunately, the clouds um, in the horizon are getting higher. So 
I hope we'll still have some sun in a couple of hours, but I'm not sure. It's a shame I can't show you because it's quite beautiful. And just behind me, look at that, the smoke from the volcano. It's impressive. I honestly can't wait to go and do a tour on Etna. We were lucky enough to be hosted on Etna by a local guide, Francesco. So between December last year and February this year, there's been almost 20 violent eruptions here on Mount Etna. The volcano's always bubbling away, but violent eruptions is when it's really spitting ash and smoke into the air quite violently. So what that means is what we're walking on right now to get to the site of the big eruption in 1865 is all freshly laid ash. We learned that despite Etna being one of the most active volcanoes in Europe, she's actually a slow erupting volcano, which means that typically when an eruption happens, the lava takes its time to meander down. This means fewer casualties than, say, the smaller but more explosive Mount Vesuvius, which, as you might remember, made Pompeii famous back in 79 AD. All right, guys. We are still walking. Well, actually, we started not a long time ago, but what's quite amazing, I think, is that every time I look up to uh, look at the landscape, it's it's always different, it changes all the time because we are walking around Etna and uh, we see so many different patterns and, and the sea is behind me and Etna is there, it's, uh, it's beautiful. So Etna has been building for 500,000 years. Originally this place was a lake all that time ago. There are almost 300 different craters on Mount Etna which represent where eruptions have taken place in the past. Now what's fascinating is after the eruption has happened, the magma comes up obviously and hardens into basalt. And what that does is essentially it cauterizes the wound or the uh, eruption and it means that there will never be an eruption there ever again. Where we're going now we're happy because it means it's very unlikely that there's going to be an eruption under our feet. Fingers crossed. If you love our videos and would like to support our production, consider becoming a patron. More details on sailingtalia.com. This here behind me is called, in Italian, a fumarola, which is where all the molten gases would have escaped from after an eruption. So right here, all smoke and gas would be coming out here. If you were to visit this, well, if it was safe to visit this after an eruption, you'd need a mask because of everything coming out. What's incredible, as we're walking higher and higher, we're starting to pick up some of the wind coming from the south, which is actually a hot wind coming from Africa, to think. We're close enough to feel the heat of Africa here in Italy. Unbelievable. Grotta delle Nevi means the snow cave. And I will give you some information when we are inside. Follow me. Ready? <laughs> we learned that these caves are famous for two reasons. During the Romantic period, the likes of Oscar Wilde, Goethe, and Lord Byron were lured to Etna by its links with mythology. 
local thieves would lighten the pockets of these foreign visitors and hide here to avoid the authorities. The caves were also used to create and stockpile ice in the winter, and then distributed to the local villages in summer. There's something mysterious about it, and I like it. I'll do it, okay? Is it? Yeah, you're fine. Because I don't want the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. There's there's a foot view. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. never realized just how fertile a volcano soil could actually be until we visited Etna's most famous agro-energetic farm and vineyard, Bagalaro. The ingenious owners and their full-time staff cultivate a massive variety of fruits and vegetables and have in recent years started producing their own natural wine. Using solar cells, mini wind turbines and practices like gravity irrigation, they're able to service a huge 95% of their energy needs through renewable sources. We were seriously inspired by their passion for organic produce, sustainable living, and innovative agriculture. Check out the link in the description for more information. Well, it's no mystery that Laura and I like a glass of wine, so we took a peek inside their cellar and happily accepted their invitation for a tasting. So it's been a day of firsts, waking up on a volcano, beautiful blue sky to start the day, visiting that fantastic organic farm, and now navigating Mount Etna with about 10 meters of visibility in front of us, completely encircled by fog. It's uh, going to take a lot of concentration to get down here. So we are back from Mount Etna and we're both pretty shattered. Everything's unpacked. Law has already had a shower. I am about to throw myself in bed. What an adventure that last 24 hours has been. How are you feeling back there? Exhausted, but feeling very lucky for the last two days we had. Feeling very lucky. I'm feeling very lucky that we didn't perish in all of that fog on Etna. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty impressive. It was like 20 minutes and then it was okay. I'm gonna say 40. I reckon we were in it for 40 minutes. Anyway, anyway, we're happy we're back and we have a lot of memories now. Absolutely. That we'll a share with you. Anyway, the battery's running out, so thanks Bye. for watching, guys, and we will see you next week. And like a video! We love you! Ciao! <laughs>